keynote speech, I made the mistake of forgetting to ask for uh, questions. So uh, let me first uh, start by opening the floor to uh, questions to Professor Atina Ansal. Uh, if anybody has any uh, questions or discussion to uh, add to this. Yes, I'm very dumb. Thank you, Professor Spokan. Uh, Professor Asal, thank you for the, the greatest presentation ever because first-hand knowledge is more important than the available literature. So we were privileged to listen to your talk and benefit from your experience in laboratory testing. My question, uh, maybe not a question, but rather than a, a comment is uh, that uh, do you really believe laboratory testing is uh, equally an art? And what are the critical recommendations? For example, you recommended wonderfully like in a, a hollow cylinder device, living in a gap, uh, something like that. We would love to hear those things because those are very valuable for high quality testing. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Well, you know, this is a very difficult issue because laboratory testing requires people interested in the laboratory. Unfortunately, as far as I have seen in my whole career, there are normally very few people interested in the laboratory. If you're not interested in the laboratory, the laboratory tests are, of course, a burden to you. But if you're, and in my maybe some 50 years of academic life, I have seen only very few, like four or five students who are mainly interested in the laboratory and who would be interested in discussing the details with me. Therefore, as Kamai pointed out, is it an art? Well, it's not an art, but it is actually familiarity or similarity thing. and unfortunately certain things are not written in the books and if you don't do the test yourself since I left Istanbul Technical University in 2002 at that time I was something like 50 years or more I used to do the testing myself, because if you don't do the testing yourself, if you don't fill the cell with water or whatever, you don't really understand what is going on. So, I don't think it's an art, but it is a kind of working experience, and laboratory testing would require significant experience. Unfortunately, things have changed. When we used testing, everything was analog and everything was mechanically possible to be repaired. But now, lately, as a result of the professional soil laboratories, everything is digital and everything is electronic. For example, now, direct shear box test systems to our laboratory in Özgün, and we cannot even repair them because they're controlled completely by a computer. And in order to change even the testing sequence, you may need stronger. I understand. It looks better. Anyway, so laboratory testing is would require experience and interest. So maybe what Kamalundar was saying that if you don't have the interest in laboratory testing, or if you do not like to work with your hands, get dirty, then you may not, you should not try to work in the laboratory. And just one 
example that I would have. For example, in soil mechanics, as you may know, we have drain tests. And in one job, they required us to do the drain test, drain triaxial. And at that time, this was way back in the 80s, uh, we didn't have recorders that would automatically record displacements or forces. So I slept on the table by the traction system and woke up every 15 minutes to get the recordings. If you are willing to do that, you can come and test the work in the laboratory. Thank you very much. Hi, I am Mortas Azarzu from uh, Middle East Technical University, a PhD candidate working with Professor Kaman on the research. Uh, Professor Atir, uh, while talking uh, about cyclic triaxial tests, uh, you talked about the airspace uh, should be left above the soil. Is it a limitation for, for all the apparatuses, or uh, it's still we need to do this in our tests? Well, if you have a vertical or lateral cyclic stresses, it will also, if you have a cell, and if the cell is filled with water, it will also induce cyclic pressures in the water that would be cyclic confining pressure. So there should always be an air cushion. The term is air cushion. So that when you do cyclic testing, confining pressure does not change. So air cushion is a must in triaxial testing. Even if we control the certain pressure uh, automatically or we keep it at a constant volume? Well, if you control the volume change as we were discussing with Kamal Önder, but the problem is cyclic stresses. Even if you control the volume change, automatically if you're actually cycling the confining stress, you would be changing the volume accordingly. So even in the volume change control system, the cell should not be totally filled up. It, it should have an air cushion at the top. Okay. Hi, my name is Ahmed Sohidi. So we are bothering you with a lot of questions, but uh, we want to learn from the best. I'm also, uh, if you can take time, yeah, yeah. Professor come Kamen. with the question. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm building my, my device from scratch, which is a multi directional simple shear uh, device. Uh, in one of the figures that you presented in your presentation, what's, uh, it's about the different results that we achieve from uh, different sample preparation or different way of sample preparation and simple shear device. So, uh, to, to cut it short, would you please elaborate more about the sample preparation in simple shear device? Because it's a very uh, small sample. And you know, like uh, when we start the test, we assume that my relative density is before applying the confining stress. So, uh, and maybe people have a different result or different uh, response to the soil due to this uh, initial condition. People might uh, say that my relative density during preparation of this sample is this much, but it is uh, the other person who did the same test, he will take it as the uh, relative density after applying the confining stress. So would you please elaborate more on the sample preparation and the relative density uh, uncertainty? Yeah, Thank sample you. preparation was actually was observed in 1977 by a PhD thesis in University of Berkeley, Bolivis. And we also did certain things after, after, after him, actually, to see the variation. You have to remember that when we are testing sands in geologic environment, how this and their response is a very important issue. <coughs> it was generated and carried out and deposited as an alluvial deposit. So, the issue that was observed by Mulidis and of course by researcher afterwards, if you are preparing samples by classification, by vibration, or with the 
by other methodologies, you may always have a higher liquefaction resistance. And I didn't show exactly but when we did what pre liquefaction tests, this is what we observed. And when we did standardization tests, normally we prepare with air pollution or water pollution. You know, you have water and you pollute in the temple. That also, I haven't mentioned that all during my talk, but one of the most important issues in the sand is to get B checked over 90%. Almost impossible if you do not apply carbon monoxide or you have to change drain water. But how you prepare your sample is a very important issue. I mean, there's really cofaction tests, and the, one of the reasons why really cofaction resistance was very low because you liquefy the soil and the veins are separated from each other. They are actually simulating what may have happened in water during the resettlement, and they have much more uh, affected or much more uh, liable to liquefaction because of the structure. This actually the structure and the fabric, in a sense, was not initially observed in early 70s. Later, it was observed that fabric was first considered as a part of the clay structure. But later, after detailed investigations on sand, it was observed that the fabric and structure is an important issue. So no matter your sample is small or large, you have to make sure that your sample fabric or your sample structure extent should be same or constant, whatever you do, but you have to always do the compare your results among your tests. So fabric is an important issue in sense. And of course, the reason why constituting samples in the laboratory is important because all of them give to a different fabric. Thank you very much for the uh, questions and for all the additional insight from Professor uh, Ansel. So with that, let's uh, start the uh, first session. So I would like to uh, invite uh, Vice Chair 